Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about a few tips and tricks on replacing one of these. This is a blend door actuator for a 2015 GMC Acadia. This happens to be the bad one. Now there's several of these in the car that can control the blend doors to control where your HVAC, your hot and your cold air is blowing in your cabin. This one happens to be for the hot and cold in the front of the cabin and it went bad. This is the bad one. I've already replaced it. But uh, the purpose of this video isn't actually to show how to replace it, but just give a few tips on some things you'll need and some things to make your life a little bit easier with this job because it can be kind of daunting. So the, the first thing to actually do, and there's plenty of other videos on YouTube about this, is you're going to need to take off the glove box door. There's a panel underneath that covers the blower motor. Uh, there's two pull pins for that. Uh, those are covered in other videos. In addition to that, I also took off this little trim piece here. Uh, you basically pull it out at the bottom, pull it a little forward, and then next to the seat there's two clips that you have to pull towards you and then forward. So those are pretty straightforward. Um, that particular one most people don't do, but it does give you a little extra shot underneath here uh, to put things up under there and get a look at where things are. Now the tricky part about this one is there's actually two actuators on this side. You can see one right there that's not too bad to get to and it's the one for the uh, the floor and the and the defrost in the front. That's not the one we're after. We're actually after that one right down there um, that's a little harder to get to. Now one of the hardest things is you can't get a direct shot on any of those screws. So I, I pulled a couple tricks from a few different videos but the main one was there was a trim piece right here and a few people got smart and drilled a hole right there so you could at least get a shot to the screw right there but uh, if you just remove that piece which is covered by the glove box and nobody will see it um, you can just pull that out there and you can actually get your hand in there quite a bit to start screws and see what you're doing and things like that so that helped quite a bit the second thing was I drilled a hole right there that has a straight shot to one of the screws right there. Otherwise, you have to come in from the back side with something like this, which is a very low profile T20 Torx bit. Um, if it's very long, it's not gonna fit in there and then be able to turn it. So. Uh, this is a nice little set from Harbor Freight. It's an icon. I would uh, definitely get this little kit right here uh, if you're going to do it the other way. And it's a nice one to have anyway. So again, I use the T20 Torx screwdriver. And with this one, I have a straight shot at that. At that one right there. It's kind of hard to see with, without the light. There's one right there. And then there's one right there. So those are pretty easy to get to. The other thing that removing this piece makes easier is seeing this connector right there. It's kind of hard to see. It's red. I actually removed the screws and I was able to pull the whole actuator up here and disconnect the connector on that. So that was uh, an easy, easier way to do it. Once you have some good access here for your hands and your tools and you can actually see where these bolts are without having to stick your head up under there because it really doesn't fit. So again, some of the tools I used, obviously a flashlight. I also used a headlamp, which was very nice because it puts the right the light right where your eyes are. Um, I used a extendable mirror to kind of see behind things and see where those bolts were sometimes. Uh, probably the most useful tool I had was a little magnet, extendable magnet. You can put the bolts on here to, um, to help start them, or you can come up from the bottom and you put the bolt on there, and then you can get the screwdriver on it. 
So that was pretty handy. One of the last tools I used um, that made my life a little easier, I'll we'll back up here a little bit, is this, uh, it's called an underdash creeper. It's a little over a hundred bucks, I think, but it sure makes your life easier when you're working under a dash, especially when you're old or have bad knees. And it keeps you from having to crawl in there on your side, dangling out of the, the side, or um, put your feet up on the seat upside down doing uh, somersaults. So in any case, those are some tips on replacing this. Again, there's plenty of other videos out on YouTube on how to actually replace it and how to test it and things like that. I just thought I'd give some tips. Thank you.